Welcome to another video. We have a question from the AIME 2001, and it is to find the sum of all the roots of this equation. You know nobody expects you to solve this equation that has 2001 roots. We're supposed to use some facts, and that's why I said Talking about Vieta's formula opens the door to so many other questions I had avoided before the last video. So now, this is easy to tackle because in order to find the sum of all of the roots, all I need is to write this as a polynomial and make sure I know the first two terms of that polynomial. Once I'm able to establish that, I can do all the math that is required to get the answer. Let's get into the video. Now, I do not know what the answer to this question is, but I know what to do. So, unless I make a mistake, the answer is most likely going to be right. <laughs> it's a risk. So, the first thing I need to do is to get a polynomial. This one is already a polynomial, and this, when expanded using binomial expansion, is going to be a polynomial. I just need to remember how to do binomial expansion. Well, we know how to do it. Whenever we have a plus b raised to power n, we don't know the n, we know that the first term is going to be a raised to power n. That is certain. And then the next term is going to be plus. It's going to be, so since we have the next term, it's going to be n combination. So it is written like this often, n combination 1 multiplied by this term, a raised to n minus 1, multiplied by b raised to power 1. So this power is what's going to be on this, and this less 1 is what's going to be on this. That's the next term. We can do one more, okay? If we go one more, it's going to be the same thing, which is going to be n combination 2. This is going to be a raised to power n minus 2, and this is b to the second power. Okay, so if we use that, this is n plus, we keep going on until we get to the very last term. And like I said, we need just the first two terms. Okay, but just for safety reasons, I'm going to do the first three, because there's no work to be done on the first one. Now, another thing you should observe is this polynomial has been flipped in such a way that if you, if you expand this this way, your last term is going to be what is supposed to be the first term because your x is going to be at the very end. So in order to avoid that waste of time, well, it's not a waste of time. I can't do 2001 expansions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this. And 1 is the same thing as minus x plus 1 half raised to 2001. So this is the guy that I need to expand. And I say that minus x plus 1 half raised to 2001 equals, if I apply this rule, the very first term is going to be this raised to power 2001. That's going to be minus x raised to 2001 plus. I'm going to do the next term using this formula. It is n combination 1. Well, n combination 1 is always n, so this actually is just n a to the n minus 1 times b. Pre-calculus. Okay, plus, what is n combination 2? Well, the combina combination formula is basically n factorial over n minus 2 factorial 2 factorial. And then you write this, a to the n minus 2, b squared. Okay, that's what we got. So, this is going to be the formula for the next term. Ah, can it fit here? Okay, let's see. So this is going to be n, or n is 2001. It's going to be 2001 multiplied by a to the n minus 1. Our a is negative x. So that's going to be negative x raised to power 2001 minus 1. That's 2000 multiplied by b. In this case, our b is 1 half, which is going to be times 1 over 2, okay? And then we have one more term, which is going to require the factorial. It's going to be 
2001 factorial over 2001 minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial then times negative x raised to power 2000 n minus 2, 2000, no, to be, if we subtract 2 from n, it's going to be 1999. Ah, interesting. And then you're going to have, um, our b is going to be squared, which is going to be 1 half squared. Okay. And then plus all the other terms, but they're not going to be relevant. So let's get rid of this. So now I'm going to take each of these terms and simplify them. Well, this has a minus sign. So it means my negative x plus one half to the 2001 is the same thing as negative because a negative number raised to an odd power will retain the negative. So it's negative x to the 2001. Okay, let's go here. When you raise a negative number to an even power, the negative disappears and you have one half. Okay, so this is 2001 times one half. So that's 2001 over two plus 2001 over two times x to the 2000. Okay, to the next one. This is 2001 factorial over, this is gonna be 1999 factorial, and then you have two factorial. Well, two factorial is the same thing as two, so I'm just going to evaluate what I can at the same, oh, there's two here. There is one raised to power, one half squared is one fourth. So if you multiply two by one fourth is one over eight. So ultimately, the a sub n in this case is going to be um, 2000, and one factorial over 1999 factorial times eight. Okay, and then what comes here is gonna be, oh, this is gonna be negative, a negative number raised to a power. So we're gonna put a negative here. It's gonna be negative and x to the 1999. Now that we have this guy expanded at least sufficiently to get what we need, we need to combine this. Why did I do the third term? It's because I already saw that this is gonna get eliminated by this guy. So I need two terms, the first two terms. So here, I'm gonna say that now we can rewrite this expression here as then we have x to the 2001 plus this is going to be minus x to the 2001 plus 2001 over 2 x to the 2000 minus this is going to well there's no simplification is going to be minus um, 2001 factorial over 1999 factorial times 8 x to the 1999 plus blah 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 um, equals 0. This is going to cancel this. Cha, cha. So the actual polynomial starts from here. This is the very first term of our polynomial, and this is a sub n, this is a sub n minus one. And remember Vieta's formula, the sum of all the roots of any polynomial is the ratio of a sub n minus one to a sub n with a minus sign. r1 plus r2 plus tap 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 plus r 2001 is basically equal to minus this over this. So I'm going to write minus 2001 factorial over 1999 factorial 8. 
So ignore this. We just we just need the coefficients, okay? Divided by um, this one, two thousand and one over two. Nice. Okay. So to clear these fractions at once, I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 1999 times eight, because that way it takes care of this, it also takes care of the top. Okay, let's do it. Actually, I'm, I'm just gonna do it here. Multiply by 1999 factorial times eight. The same thing, 1999 factorial times eight. Okay, so if I do this to both of them, see what I get. The sum of the roots, this is going to take care of this, and this minus cancels this minus, so I just have 2001 factorial here. And if I use this to multiply this, this 2 is going to cancel this out, and what do I get? I'm going to get 2001 times 1999 factorial times 4, so I'm going to get 4 times 2001 times 1999 factorial. Nice. Maybe I should write it here so I have more space to do the work. So this is the short form of the sum of all the roots starting from the first root to the nth root where n is 2001. In this case it's going to be like I said 2001 factorial 2001 factorial over in the bottom I'm going to have 2001 times 4 times 1999 factorial. Okay, and in simplifying factorials, we can rewrite this until we get 1999 factorial. So this is the same thing as 2001 times 2000 times 1999 factorial. And then under this, I'm going to have 2001 times 4 times 1999 factorial. Like I said, unless I made a mistake during the computation, this is supposed to be correct. This takes this guy out. This takes this guy out. And if you divide 2000 by 4, what do you get? Ta-da-da! My math is not that. 500, no way. Four in five, that's 20, that's 500. Huh. R1 plus R2 plus tap, 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 plus Rn, 2001 equals that. Okay, now this was not what I got the first time. I got 250, so I have to check whether this is correct or not, because I don't know what the answer is. Or just leave a comment in the comment section. No, let me check it. <laughs> okay. I think this is correct. Because I did check and I noticed that I forgot to put this one half the first time. Okay, which was my B. Yeah, so. That's what was wrong with my first calculation. This should be correct. And if it's not correct, well, you know how to do it. Just do it. See you in the next video. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.